Keith. And Alan talking about movies. They may be best friends, but they always disagree. Keith. And Alan, I seen that. So Keith, you and your son are doing a podcast with the goal of watching a hundred movies throughout the year, right? That's correct. And you're doing it all through with Movie Pass? Is that the that's the goal? Right. Are you familiar with Movie Pass being over in Thailand? I've heard about it. I'm pretty jealous. Okay. Uh it sounds yeah, it's, amazing. It's pretty awesome. Uh it's um it's a movie subscription service. It's uh if you pay monthly it's ten dollars a month, but now they have a new plan where you can get it for seven dollars a month, which is about ninety dollars a year if you pay by the year. So okay, it's it's pretty crazy. And you can see a movie a day, right? That's what it is. That that's correct. Yeah, it, it resets at midnight, so technically you could see a movie at like eleven thirty, and then go back again the next day at ten a.m. if you wanted to. Okay. Yeah, right. and then uh, so here in Thailand, movies cost like four dollars to see. But in the States, when I left, they're up to $10. That's about. But, yeah. I mean, I live in New Hampshire, which a lot of people think is like, you know, kind of a redneck state. Uh-huh. Maybe some of it is, but, um, it, there's a, there's a Regal Cinemas theater near us and their RPX theater just raised over $18 for one ticket. 18? So you wow. can't, $18. Yep. You can't use uh, Movie Pass for RPX, but their normal prices are over thirteen dollars. What's so RPX? Basically, it's like a bigger screen. It's it's uh, a it, they call it LIMAX because it's not actually IMAX. Okay. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so it's just a it's just a, basically a bigger screen. Yeah. It's supposed to have bigger sound, but but even at the thirteen dollar price, uh, you know, you'll make your money back with one showing. Yeah. Yeah. It's I, I, actually. I don't get how that works. <laughs> like, I don't see how that's a good business model. I guess it's a similar to like a gym. They're just hoping people will subscribe and then just not use it. That is the ultimate goal. Um, <laughs> but, uh, we, we talk about movie pass news a lot on the podcast too. And, uh, so they're looking at selling people's data, which is a common thing. I'm not sure they're going to make enough money from that either, but, but also the gym model. Um, they're looking at tailored advertising. You know, for example, like let's say you see Black Panther. Yeah. And you, let's say you see it two or three times, then most likely you like that movie. So movie pass is going to sell your information or they're going to, they're going to start to, uh, offer you to buy like the soundtrack or something right through their app. Oh, that's, okay. that's their goal. Yeah. So, but right now they are losing money like crazy. Yeah, I bet. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I would have to imagine. I, I don't, it doesn't seem like a good business strategy, but yeah, I know. I guess neither <laughs> did Netflix at the time. So see how that all worked it's out. It's funny you mentioned Netflix because, uh, Mitch Lowe is the CEO of movie pass and he's one of the creators of Netflix. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, he's actually the one that came in and lowered the price to ten dollars. But uh, he, he, you should try and Google him sometime. He, he's got a kind of a big mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so, what you and your son are doing a podcast? What's the podcast called? The Movie Pass Pod. And, uh, uh, and just sorry, go ahead. Well, when uh, just to make it clear, we're not affiliated with Movie Pass in any way. We would like them to sponsor us if they, if they're listening, uh, even like give us free memberships or something. But I, when Movie Pass lowered their price in August or September, um, I had always wanted to do a podcast. You've done, you guys have done quite a few episodes now, right? Yeah, we're like up to 150 right now, I think. Yeah, I listened to several before I came on and I got that theme song stuck in my head for like two, <laughs> two days. <laughs> yeah, editing it is, uh, it, 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 it's always in my head. Yeah. So once they lower their price, I'm like, well, it'll be, it'll be cool to see maybe try and see 100 movies in theaters because I usually only see about 20. Uh-huh. And then once the year was getting closer, I, you know, I was talking to my son and and saying, hey, maybe we should, you know, try and document it somehow. So that's how we came up with the idea for the podcast. Cool. What's been your favorite movie this year? Love Simon. Love Simon. I, I haven't even heard of that. It's a it's a coming of age tale, um, starring Nick Robinson. Uh, it's told oh, he he's actually he's actually gay. Okay. And uh, 
so it's kind of told from that perspective, yeah. but that, that's not even really relevant to the story. You know, I mean, it, it kind of is, but just, it's kind of interesting to see, you know, from that perspective, because coming of age tales of my jam, I, I love those. Yeah. So, and I, I just love that movie. Yeah. We just did, I just did a podcast with my friend Donovan, um, about, uh, the fundamentals of caring. I don't know if you've seen that or not. Oh yeah. On Netflix. Yes. Yep. Paul Rudd. Yeah, with that Paul Rudd. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I enjoyed that movie too. Yeah, those are, it's always, it's really compelling, those stories, especially when you have a, a mentor who is not very good <laughs> or like, uh, right. what you consider politically correct, I guess. You're just kind of a, a rough mentor. And it's just interesting yeah. to watch those relationships grow and develop and stuff. But, uh, that's true. But that, that's definitely been one of the better Netflix movies too. I don't know how many movies you watch on Netflix, but, uh, or at least Netflix produced or bought movies. They're, they've been pretty rough. Yeah. Yeah. So they used to produce a lot more. And I think this last year or two, they just started buying them. Uh, right. And that's been one of the bigger issues, especially when it comes to like Cloverfield paradox. Uh, cause yeah. I mean that, well, that was JJ Abrams fault. That was never yeah. a Cloverfield movie. That was called the God Particle originally, and they just right. threw monsters in there. That's why it doesn't make any sense when you watch it. But the uh, yeah, have that, you have you seen the the trailers for A Quiet Place? No, I don't think so. Uh, well, it's a it's like a horror movie coming out this weekend, and uh, and uh, it looks really good. But there are some slight rumors that it could be Cloverfield related. I really hope it's not. But um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> check it out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I get, uh, we get one movie in English in my town, um, every other week, okay. it seems like. And generally it's the bigger. So like right now it's already player one. And then yeah. there might be something in between that and, uh, Avengers. But like it's always, you know, there's Black Panther and like there's just not a lot of, uh, uh, movies that are interesting that come through town. They're just the bigger budget, like <laughs> blockbuster, like, which are fun. But I, I miss seeing like movies that I actually care about going sure. to the theater. You know what I mean? Like, I know and it sounds like I'm just, you know, talking bad about blockbusters, but they're, they're, they're fun, but they're not, uh, you don't have to think about them after you're done. You know what I mean? You don't, you don't consider like, Oh, why did Spider-Man do this thing and all that stuff? Like, it's not something, uh, you really get to think about a lot. Um, yeah, I get what you're saying. Sure. But anyways, what we're talking about today is Clue. Right. 1985, uh, comedy murder mystery. Yeah. Did you, when was the first time you've seen this? The first time? I think mm-hmm. I was 11. Okay. I, re- I remember watching it. I was staying over at my friend's house and his mom rented it. And I, the reason I remember it so clearly is because she was taking notes throughout the whole thing trying to figure out who did it. <laughs> <laughs> which is, which is bananas. Cause if you've seen the movie, it's just, I mean, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. You know, I, you know, I, I love the movie, but if you really break it down, it's, it's crazy. I mean, <laughs> yeah. But fr- yeah. Uh, but, but, yeah, the first time I saw it, we, uh, we rented on VHS from Blockbuster. And sure. Yeah. I think, I think it was the same. Yeah. Yeah. It just, uh, it just makes me feel so old. It's so long ago. Yeah. VHS, Blockbuster, those are things that don't exist anymore. Yeah. But, yeah. The, uh, the found, the founder of Blockbuster just died a couple weeks ago. Did he? Yep. That was That's side, side note. <laughs> uh-oh. <laughs> Why don't you, why don't you explain the plot? What's the what's the story of Clue? Okay. Well, there are six guests who get invited to this New England uh mansion, I guess. It's kind mm-hmm. of a scary house on the top of a hill. And it's a mysterious dinner party, and none of them know why they're there. And So they sit down. Well, they all, first of all, they all have drinks and meet each other and then they have dinner and then people start getting murdered and they, they basically try and figure out who did it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So they get invited by this guy. They, they all get letters and they get invited to this dinner party 
and they find out that everyone, all the guests are being blackmailed. Uh, they're being, right. so you have the traditional characters, uh, Mrs. Peacock, Mrs. White, Professor Plum, Mr. Green, Colonel Mustard, and Miss Scarlet. Those are the dinner guests. And then you have, um, Mr. Body, who is, uh, potentially the blackmailer. That's what they think. That's what they're told. And, uh, yeah. he, he's, so the, the butler said the police are on their way. Uh, if you tell the police, then you won't be blackmailed by Mr. Body anymore. You'll be free, but all your secrets will be out in the open. What, what do you guys want to do? And Mr. Body gives them all weapons and says, we can just kill the butler now and that will solve all the problems. You guys can continue paying me. No one will know about your secrets and he will be gone. He won't, you know, rat to the police. The light shut off and Mr. Body ends up getting murdered. And so then the rest of the movie is this trying to figure out who did it, how could someone have done it while six other people or five other people end up getting murdered throughout the whole thing. Right. Yeah. There, there's a, you're a lot better at that plot. Uh, to, <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I just watched it. I, <laughs> I just watched it last night. Okay. <laughs> but, um, uh, well, I, I watched it this weekend, but I just, anyways. Yeah, well, yeah, there's a great, there's a great line by Wadsworth. That's the butler played by Tim Curry. Yes. Where he says, uh, we're trying to find out who did it with what and where. I, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. That wasn't it exactly, but yeah. you know, he's screaming and he gets hit in the head with a candlestick. So that, that's basically the plot of the movie and of the game. Yeah. Yeah. This was, so this was very true to the game, to the, to the heart of the game, which I think yeah. they did really well. And especially in this stylized comedy where like, cause you have like things like Battleship. Um, I, I, there's a ton of other ones. Ouija, like there's a ton of movies that are based on games that take themselves seriously. Like, Oh, you, when you watch it, you're like, oh, they, they are trying to convince me that this is real. Where Clue never does that for a second. It knows exactly what it is the entire time. It knows that it's just a big joke and that making a movie based on a board game is kind of a joke in itself. Yeah, that, that's a great point. I didn't even think about it because you mentioned Battleship. That, that was a, that movie is, is tough to watch. Yeah. And you I know, mean, it, you could, it, you you think about okay clue or battleship or whatever board game like there's no reason there's no real depth to any of those games to actually make a story out of but yeah because they don't try to convince you that this is important it it flows much better yeah on and on that point did you, have you heard that they're trying to uh make another one with uh, Ryan Reynolds uh clue yeah no i hadn't uh, well, apparently it's supposed to be, it's not like this. It's supposed to be one where they, I don't know, travel around the world trying to serve, solve murders or something. So it, it's kind of speaking to what you said about how maybe it's going to be taking itself a little bit too seriously. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, we'll see, I guess. And we'll, we'll see if it's, it's even, if it's even going to be made because they've been talking about remaking Clue for years. Mm. So. Yeah. But he's got the writers of Deadpool and stuff on, on board. So this one looks like it could actually happen. Well, I mean, Ryan Reynolds is great in 50% of the stuff he does. So <laughs> there's that. Yeah. You know, they're like, that's a good estimate. He, uh, he's, he's consistently good at what he does. He's just been in a lot of bad yeah. things. Mm, that's true. Um, so maybe it might work. I just, I don't know. I, I think clue, this is one of the movies that holds up even today. Cause this is, uh, 33 years old, 32 years old at this point. Um, but because the comedy yeah, is, right. is physical, it's a, you know, it's a physical based comedy. It's not a social commentary on anything. It's not, you know, jokes that are references to anything. Everything is, uh, these physical jokes. Uh, you know, them running into each other, them, there's a, the one scene where, uh, what is his name? Mr. Uh, Green? Mr. Green is trying to sit down in yeah, the, in yeah. the study and people just keep taking his spot and he keeps just moving, 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 moving. And it's like, it's, it's like 20 seconds long clip, but it, it's just, 
you know, they just let it breathe. And the, the comedy just works because you can relate like, oh yeah, that is, that is something that happens, you know, where you're just like, you're just kind of out of your element and you can't do something that you're trying to do. And so stuff like that is relatable forever, essentially. That Yeah, and to all all age groups too. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is it's really well done. Um it's a lot of fun to watch. And the the mystery side of things is not really existent. I don't know how I, what do you think? Do you think that this is would you consider this a mystery? Um no. I think that's another good point. Um because it, I I tried to think about you know, specific points. Okay. Let's say like towards the, well, at the end, actually not towards yeah. the end, the end Wadsworth says that he invited that motorist. And then that doesn't make any sense because we saw the motorist car. It was, you know, up on some rocks. So he got into an accident. Right. And then the motorist didn't say he knew anybody. Yeah. You know, so, and then it's the same with the other guests to it. Except for the uh, singing telegram, she didn't really have a chance to say anything. But like the cop, <laughs> the cop, uh, I guess maybe he, he wouldn't have said anything because he was being bribed. But yeah, I mean, it, it's totally like you can't. If, if you look at it like that, you, you're not going to enjoy it. Yeah, you know, if you if you really try and break it down like that. Yeah, yeah, and I think because so originally, which I think is is so funny. And just kind of genius. When they released it in theaters, they, they, those final three endings, they did differently depending on the theater it went to. So I know I I read that too. Yeah. I did some research. That was, that's really cool. Yeah. And so now I think even as as soon as the movie was released, they released it with all three endings. It wasn't like you were buying one tape and it could be one ending or not. Now it's all, all the endings are in there. But the, just the idea of like, Oh, if you go and see it in this town or you see it in this town, you're going to see a completely different movie. And the reason yeah. why they could do that was because there's not a lot of consistency <laughs> throughout the movie to where you could actually piece things together and figure it out. The reason why they That's could true. have three distinct endings, uh, I think one was Mrs. Peacock was a killer. One was, um, Miss Scarlet was a killer. And then one, everyone was a murderer except for. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Green. And I also think that they tried to do that because they wanted to sell more tickets. It didn't work out because this movie kind of bombed at first. I mean, obviously it's become a cult classic, but they wanted people to, I, I also read online that theaters were putting up posters saying that we have this ending. And then, you know, other po- theaters were putting up, we have this ending, not exactly telling them which one, but yeah. you know, telling them that they had a different one. So they were trying to get people to go to more than one showing. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, there's also a, uh, a kind of a famous novelization of this, this movie too, where there's a, f- actually a fourth ending. I actually tried to buy it, but it's extremely rare and really expensive. Mm. If any of your listeners check it out on eBay, like you, it's like a hundred dollars for like oh, wow. a cheap paperback. And apparently in that ending, Wadsworth killed everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what it seems like. Right. When you watch the know, movie, that's right, the one yeah. that makes the most sense is that Wadsworth was the killer. Uh, right. Yeah. Cause he was the one blackmailing everyone. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, for what they said was the actual ending. <laughs> but, uh, no, I think, I thought Tim Curry did a great job at being Wadsworth. His, he was not trustworthy, but he seemed honest at the same time. Like, he seemed like he's telling the truth, but you still don't trust him. Yeah. And I, I think that's a really hard thing to convey, uh, being sneaky and honest. And I, I think he did. I think he pulled it off really, really well. Right. Yeah. Actually, one of my notes was I wanted to ask you guys, uh, who your favorite character, character was. Is it Wadsworth? Uh, probably. Yeah. I think Wadsworth. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, Mr. Green. Was pretty funny. The, yeah. Uh, the not gay guy, gay guy. I don't know. It depends on the ending, I guess. But uh, <laughs> right. What about you? Who's your favorite? I I think it's either Wadsworth or Mrs. White. I think she has a, a lot of like really funny lines. Like for example, my favorite line of the movie is um, 
Um, life after death is, is as improbable as, as sex after marriage. <laughs> <laughs> when she's talking about how she murdered her husband. So yeah, well, yeah. Not, I mean, when she's trying to deny that she murdered her husband. Yeah. So her story was that, let's see, I, I, she was, she was married. She was basically a black widow. She had, was it three different husbands? And they all just I think it, three, yeah. ended up dying and uh, one of them got decapitated and she never got in trouble for any of them. Right. Yeah. That That's another funny uh, physical comedy joke where she says that she, his head and his, you know, whatever got cut off and then all the guys fold their legs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, they, they, they're very aware of everyone on screen that. Yeah. It's something that I don't think really happens that often. I just watched um, Game Over, man. I don't know if you saw it. That's also on Netflix. Uh, no, I haven't watched it yet, but I, I plan to. It uh, it kind of beats you over the head with the jokes. Okay. And where this is just like it respects the person watching it to catch jokes. And if you don't, then that's fine, too. You know, they don't yeah. need to... That it's not forcing it down your throat. Like if you're paying attention, there's so much going on that you can appreciate. But if you're not, there's still enough to keep you engaged. Hmm. Definitely true. Uh, I'm really glad that you liked it because I, I had noticed that there, I mean, when you asked me what movie I wanted to watch, I was looking through your recent stuff that you guys had reviewed. And I noticed a lot of eighties movies, die hard, uh, Home Alone, which technically is 1990, but it's close enough. Yeah. So and then I figured, yeah, why not that? Because it's one of my favorite movies. Yeah, I, I this is the second or third time I've seen it, but I, I I really enjoyed watching it again. Yeah, that's good. I was uh, I was wondering what you guys were going to think about it. I know it it's technically a cult classic, but I'm sure there are people out there that just don't like it. I mean, it. It wasn't critically re- reviewed well. Yeah. It, it, it's raw. It's actually rotten on Rotten Tomatoes, which is a crime. Personally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I think, I mean, there's a reason why movies are like they are today. And part of that is people are, would rather have things force fed to them. You know, the, have the jokes kind of just in your face. And so they, so you don't have to think so. I mean, and then I get it. Like you would rather just sit down and relax and kind of take a break from considering things or thinking about things and stuff like that. And so this movie, not while it's not like a smart, high concept movie, you kind of have to put in some work to really enjoy it. And I think that people are not up for. And it was probably sold. I, I didn't really watch the trailers before watching this, so I don't know what it was how it was advertised, but it was probably more advertised as a murder mystery. And it, it's not, it's a, you know, I mean, it's just a straight up comedy and more in line with uh, Monty Python than probably anything else. Yeah. I definitely agree with that. I, I, I wish I'd watched the trailers too. Cause it, it, that's, that's interesting. I mean, I'm sure that you're right. I'm sure that it was sold as a murder mystery because it's Clue. You know, that's what the whole mm. game is. Yeah, like you but, you, you watch the first uh, few minutes, just the, the opening. They're s- establishing the tone of this is going to be kind of creepy and like trying to make you anxious with the music and the lightning and the dark lighting and just everything going on. It's just kind of like, oh, get ready for this, you know, this this ride that's going to be stressful for you. And then as soon as right. the movie gets going, it's like, oh no, this is, that's not at all what this is. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> I mean, right from the get go with the, uh, the dog poo on the shoe. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I'm laughing about that. You know, I'm, I'm 41, but, <laughs> you know, I guess, I don't know. Well, it's, I, I mean, it's, I mean, it's relatable across everything, you know, it's like, yeah, no, that sucks when stuff like that happens. And it, it doesn't, they, they reference that joke a couple times when people walk in, but they're not like, yeah. they don't, they don't cut into it, right? They don't like zoom into the shot. They don't constantly slam it in your face. It's the joke is just him like sniffing, like, oh, what is, what is that smell? And like, that's it. Like, that's the joke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so it's like, 
it's it's not in your face the whole time because that would get old, right? If every person who came in just kept stepping in it and they kept cutting it, you know what I mean? Like, but that's I feel like that's what a lot of comedies are more like now, where they there's no nuance to the jokes. It's like here's a joke and I'm gonna slam it in your face. Yeah, yeah, well, no doubt this this movie's timeless. Yeah. Well, anything uh, anything else you want to talk about this? I think that's I just wanted to mention the uh, ballroom scene mm-hmm. uh, when when uh, Miss Scarlet is by herself and she's walking towards the, the kind of windy curtains. When I was eleven, I was so scared of that scene for some reason. <laughs> but it was kind of a it was kind of a uh, a double edged sword because I. I, 11 year old me loved seeing Leslie and Warren's cleavage, but then I was, I was scared of like what was behind the curtain. I just remember that so vividly. Yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't remember that scene specifically. What, what was going on at that point? Well, um, they were going to check the ballroom, uh, him, uh, her and Colonel Mustard. You know, this is when they split up to search the house. Yeah. In the pairs. And, uh, yeah. And then, uh, they, they both notice the curtain kind of swaying. They don't know what's behind it. So Colonel Mustard says, he leaves and says, I'm going to go check the billiard room or, or whatever. And then so he, he leaves her alone and she's like walking really slowly towards it. And there's like ominous music. And, you know, as a kid, it, it was really frightening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's another thing the movie did pretty well is they had decent. Uh, motivation for all the characters to constantly getting split up. And yeah. in doing that, like you watch it and you're like, oh yeah, this makes sense why this, they would split up in groups and then even why the groups would end up, you know, splitting up for a minute or two. Like it never seemed, uh, like something was going on. But then after someone else died, they'd be like, well, clearly it was someone who was not with their partner, which is everybody. You know, and so it was like, right. oh, okay, so who, who is it? Who could have it been? And I, I was just, it's fun. It's definitely one yeah. worth watching if you haven't seen it. Yeah, I love that debate in the study of the library where Colonel Mustard suggests that they split up and then everyone says, wait a minute, <laughs> what happens if you're with the killer? The other person will get killed. <laughs> and then he's like, then we'll know who the killer was. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it covers it pretty well. Yeah, I think so. I think we got it. Uh, what is, can you tell me about your podcast again? Yeah, sure. It's called the Movie Pass Pod. It's my son Noah and I. And, uh, it's, you can find us everywhere. You know, we're on Twitter at the Movie Pass Pod, Facebook. Our site is the Movie Pass Pod. dot com. And what we do is uh, we talk about movie pass news, advice. We try and relate movie pass into our normal conversations. Like recently we had a conversation about, you know, movie pass is $10 a month, but would you pay, say, $20 a month if it included IMAX or 3D, which it doesn't, the, yeah. the, reg- the regular price. So things like that. And then we also try and review one big movie per week at least. So. Yeah, and we, uh, so we'll be back on the podcast with The Hunger Games. That's the next episode coming out. And you can find us on Twitter at I Seen That Pod. Thanks for, Are you uh, watching the first one? Yeah. Oh, sorry. No, no, you're good. Uh, yeah, we, we did the first one. We, uh, have you mo- seen it before? The Hunger Games? Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, saw okay. when they come out. We, uh, yeah. we actually record most episodes about two months in advance. Oh, I think you mentioned that. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, yeah. So, uh, thanks for coming on, Keith. Super appreciate it. it oh, a good thanks time. for having me, man.